Webflow. 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 Webflow website. Webflow. Webflow. New Lamborghini. Webflow. Webflow. The future. Webflow. Webflow. In this video, we're going to talk about what Webflow is, what it's good for, and why you should care. I personally think that I would have an interesting perspective of this since I hand code all of my own projects. My stack changes from project to project and from time to time, but however, at the moment, my stack goes something like I use React and Next.js for any front end development. I use Firebase or Superbase for any database needs. I use Vercel or Firebase for hosting. And when it comes to CMS, my CMS of choice at the moment is Sanity or maybe Contentful for bigger projects. And when it comes to e-commerce platforms, Shopify is my absolute go-to. Saying all that though, I totally understand the appeal of the no-code movement, especially for designers since it allows them to bring their designs to life. But the great thing about hand coding is that you're not necessarily bound to a single ecosystem with all of its limitations. And in case one of these companies ever goes down, I could just basically pull my code out and move it elsewhere with ease, well, sort of. Also hand coding gives you a better understanding of the underlying technology, which would make it easier for you to jump from one technology to another if a better thing comes out as technologies like this do so every day. And I think I can prove that point in this video. In this video, I'm going to learn Webflow and I'm going to gain some good Webflow knowledge and then give you my honest thoughts about its pros and cons and give you a different perspective on this topic and this tool. All right, this means two things. I want to check out the Webflow website and I want to check out what features it provides, capabilities, and we'll just go from there. So for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to do some website browsing. Let's do it. I wonder how much you could customize the checkout experience. That's something that Shopify struggles with a lot. Yeah, that's not really true. So Shopify doesn't really even allow you to do checkout page customization that much. Uh, yeah, I guess. Not necessarily though. You could get away with some stuff. Uh, again, yes and no. So that's not really that accurate. Memberships. That's interesting. I practice what I preach. They lie and put around my way. Then get lost to see. Not sure what you wanted, but I'm what you need. I know my heart just started. Yeah, I can't. Look, you can't really deny that. This is quite amazing. All the stuff that it provided over here. All right. That's how they do it. So that's how they do all those um, animations. So usually when it comes to doing parallax effects like this, um, that takes a lot of coding. So that's actually, that's really interesting. I'm really keen to check this one out. Is that Lottie? Ah, it is. Okay. I might look into that later. Um, definitely not in this one content management that's what i'm interested in so i'm assuming that's just the basic stuff that the customer gets they can upload and change content cool logic this is pretty cool as well here's my initial thoughts after checking out the website from outside in it looks like it gives designers the power to basically do almost anything a front-end developer is capable of doing on a website. Let's go ahead and dig deeper into potentially building, first of all, a website and see how I go with that. And then second of all, I want to just see how intuitive it is to pick it up. Maybe beyond today, I'm going to check out the shopping experience and the CMS and the blog. Maybe, maybe not in this video. However, I will do my research because I want to gather my thoughts at the very end of this video to see what I think this tool is good for. So I'm going to do some separate research on those but anything on those points just take it with a grain of salt let's jump right into it all right we're gonna try and build what we built for the sign and sign up project for the HTML and CSS course I just want to see how this basically compares let's go back all right so that's the body uh, what does this do adds an element what are elements elements can be almost anything is a button an element button is an element okay symbols okay let's go ahead with assets and let's create two folders let's just chuck the rest here just background images i'll chuck into that cool and then just jump there drop these guys down here go over here and Draw filters and cursors. Oh, that's cool. Um, box shadow. Nice. Oh, it seems like I can actually create variables. So 
Um, what's the difference between a section and a container? Let's see if we can do exactly this. So what do we have here? Can I change the grid? No, really. No, oh, that's interesting. It's like, so it seems like I can't change the grid, but I'm not really too sure about this. I can add breakpoints. It's basically about it. All right. All right. Okay, I get it. So this the container basically sits within everything. Um, so we're gonna add one there, and I'm gonna add what? Like, oh really? Grid columns. All oh, right. Wait, I can just add div blocks. I am going to change it to a flexi and justify center and align center. Horizontal is fine. I do want a padding, however, from top and bottom. So what's the uh, what's the padding gonna be? Oh, is there a shortcut that I could just turn this off? there I guess so let's just go ahead and add a form I'm gonna add a div inside of it here I'm gonna call this top cool all right then I'm gonna need a um, break line how do I add a break line can I add a break line Really? Uh, it's just dumb. Okay, whatever. Yeah, see, that's the stuff that I don't like, but that's okay. Yeah, see, these are the stuff that I always get worried about when I use platforms like this. Certain elements are not meant to be used for certain things. And I guess you could call it that it's a little bit opinionated, but it is this platform's opinion. So that's what I got a bit of an issue with um, when it comes to these things. However, I'm going to change the class of this to HR tag and we should be good there i'm not gonna bother with responsiveness So a couple of things, um, in terms of time, this took me a lot less time to create, but saying that, I think that's just because I'm very, very, very new to Webflow. So I'm still trying to figure stuff out and I'm missing a bunch of stuff here. Other than that, I just wanted to test it out, see what it's like. It seems very capable, right? So I find it extremely useful in some situations and I can see it being useful going forward. I might try to use it in like an actual project or two and go from there. There are a couple of missing features, but that could just be me. So for example, like when I wanted to place my background and I was looking for an attribute called centered, centered, couldn't necessarily find that. There was a bunch of other stuff like, I'm not too sure if I can actually set customized boundary boxes for my responsive design. So that's that's something that I'm keen to find out about. Um, there was a bunch of other stuff that felt a little bit weird, but I believe that that's just because I'm very new to this. So that could be it, right? Other than that, yeah, it's, it's a really, really capable tool. I might actually just start using it in like future projects and stuff and, and, and see how that goes. That's it for me just testing it out for this video. This is already a super, super long video at the moment. So now I'm going to provide my perspective on this whole new no code world. Is this the future as a lot of people claim so? For some things, absolutely yes, but not for everything. So let's just unpack that. I still believe that there are a lot of benefits into hand coding your projects. Things like the control you have over the project, the performance, the vendor lock-in, the extended customization capabilities, the ability to do exactly what you need to do with no workaround and more. 
Here are some things I wouldn't really use Webflow for today, at least. One of those would be creating a scalable blog platform. For that, I would use a proper CMS like WordPress, or if you want to go headless, I would use something like Sanity or Contentful. Creating scalable e-commerce platforms. For that, I would use something like Shopify or BigCommerce, or if you want to go even more big boy, I would probably go for something like commerce tools that we implemented in a recent project. I would also not use something like this for a scalable SaaS platform. Form. There are just way too many benefits that you can gain out of technologies like React or Svelte that is just not simply possible or at least efficient enough with Webflow yet, but maybe in the future. And lastly, design systems. When it comes to a scalable design system, I would still lean back on hand coding and using frameworks like React or Svelte. And here's a list of what I would use Webflow for today. Almost any marketing website that requires a lot of design customization for small to medium sized businesses, and in some cases, even bigger size enterprise businesses as well. Or if you have a client that needs a simple blogging platform, or they have a personal or very small e-commerce platform as well, I would say Webflow is still perfect for that. There are still many pros into using Webflow compared to hand coding your stuff. So things like abstraction of all the headaches like hosting and setups, so on and so forth. Building websites is now way more accessible than it's ever been, especially to designers. And that, that's always a great thing. New career and business opportunities. And it is truly a customizable website where it gives you control over most things that you need to develop and design for. And at the same time, here are some cons. My biggest con with this is the ecosystem and vendor lock-in. You're stuck mostly with what's available within the Webflow ecosystem and what they have developed so far. If you don't really know what you're doing, it can encourage bad coding practices, things like multiple classes, not approaching things in terms of a component level and more. I would also say the pricing point is a little bit too crazy as the stack that I mentioned at the beginning of this video is almost always a fraction of the cost of a Webflow website, or sometimes it's even free depending on the project. And the very last thing is scalability. I still have to play around with that just to see how scalable this thing is, but I have my doubts around that. The final thing that I want to touch on is the fact that the no code in Webflow isn't really no code as you would still benefit greatly by learning the basics of HTML and CSS and maybe a little bit of JavaScript to be able to achieve more unique things with your designs or to be able to fill in the gaps where Webflow might have some shortcomings. And on top of all of that, the learning curve for Webflow is actually quite steep as in it's basically the same thing as HTML and CSS and coding, except for the fact that you're now doing all of those on a UI. Why? All right, that's it for this video. I'm definitely going to deep dive into Webflow and create some more Webflow tutorials. So subscribe for that. Thanks for watching this one. If you have any questions, just leave it down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.